I'm going to put my hat on as audiologist. I'm somewhere on the list. Um, I've been an audiologist since before many of you were born. And I do feel the role of an audiologist has evolved a little bit. And I think you all need to be aware that someone who identifies and, and practices as an audiologist does have slightly different roles in what they provide um, to the community. So for example, you have the audiologist that probably did the first identification of hearing loss in a very young child and help provide information from scratch to families. What does this mean if, if your, your child does not have typical hearing? How can you navigate the world when you don't have typical hearing? Often the audiologist is the first person that the family talks to about that. Hopefully very quickly the audiologist connected the family to hands and voices, to mentors, to an education or an early intervention system to help get a team of support around that person. Then in school, in Colorado, we're lucky enough to have educational audiologists. Educational audiologists support the educational needs of people that do not have typical hearing, and that can be a very wide range of things. It might be testing hearing to see if the hearing needs have changed, and so if technology needs to change. It might be evaluating the educational environment specifically about environmental modifications that would help access. It would mean being part of the team that helps identify goals to give access to communication in various environments. It might be part of the team that identifies um, creative ways to meet individual needs that might cross hearing challenges, that might reach into other areas, social challenges or language challenges or um, secondary disability challenges. So there's a wide range of things that audiologists help provide. Most of you probably have seen an audiologist at school and an audiologist in a clinical setting. So an audiologist in a clinical setting is somebody that works in a healthcare type of environment. They can bill your health insurance for some of the needs that you have. They can um, provide technology sometimes. They can look at how things change over time and how we might be able to bridge the gaps. Um, and I would suggest that as you have your rising transition needs, as you're transitioning between one environment to the next, it might be from your school to a job, and that could happen when you're 15. It might be from school to another school. It might be community college, it might be college. I would suggest that you make sure that the audiologist that has been providing services is able to meet the needs that you want that you need met. So if you need more than hearing aids or more than a cochlear implant, is that audiologist able to support that? Whether that's an FM system, assistive listening devices, sometimes even alerting systems for safety, um, is the, the person you're going to, because there are excellent audiologists that fit babies with hearing loss that might not be the right audiologist to help them with transition. Um, so think about that role. I think that as audiologists, there's a couple things to meet the needs of, of kids as they get older and families as they're trying to support kids in transition, that those conversations need to be about communication access, not just about hearing levels, not just about what technology is, is on at the moment or is recommended at the moment, but what, what kind of communication challenges can we help with? Because sometimes kids and families don't have the luxury of being connected with a wide variety of support systems. Um, and so hopefully you can ask those questions. And if the audiologist isn't talking to you about communication needs, then I hope you will ask them or tell them what your communication needs, not just what your listening needs are. Because they are connected. They really cannot be looked at as completely different. Um, also, as you look at this transition into independent decision making, be sure you have an audiologist that is well connected with, for example, vocational rehabilitation. A really critical step in making sure that all of your options are being explored because the, the, the VR system isn't just a way to pay for things, although that's kind of nice. <laughs> it's 
also a way to get information. They are counselors. They truly have information about access and about what is legally, should be legally supporting you in your individual needs. They, they also have information that you might not be thinking about that bridges education and workplace and safety and all of those things. And so having an audiologist in the healthcare setting that works with VR, because we partner together, you know, we suggest things, the VR counselors also sometimes come back and suggest things, they help empower you as an individual to think about things. So it really is a team approach, even though many of us work in a healthcare clinic that might not have all these kind of professionals involved. So, um, Please think about audiologists as being a partner in communication. And um, quite honestly, many of the people that we see in the clinic don't come in that often because they primarily depend on visual communication, which is fabulous. But sometimes they do want support for access to sound or access to alerting systems or access um, even just for awareness. So audiologists have a role even for people that don't use listening to um, as their primary mode to communicate. Um, so please keep that in mind that we still want to partner with you regardless of the choices that you've made and sometimes those choices are evolved um, I think we all know that um, it's not uncommon when um, I get calls from unfortunately it's primarily parents at that transition to college who say my child didn't think they needed any accommodations I just had a call in December um, my child didn't get any accommodations and they are walking out of college and I don't know how to help them navigate what their options are because sometimes they didn't make it into disability services sometimes they didn't listen to their TOD <laughs> before they left high school sometimes they didn't access VR services because they were very comfortable with the support system that they already had and I guess my, my point is, first of all, it's never too late. I think Greg said something about you kind of get to know yourself better as you mature and you recognize that your needs evolve and as you identify your needs, it's never too late. So this particular um, teenager we had come in, we talked about some options. Of course, the first thing I said is we need to connect with VR and we need to connect with disability services and we need to explore other accommodations that happen to include a Roger system for access to sound um, that they had rejected in high school but truly embraced are embracing now. So things do change, technology changes, things things get better and sometimes when you didn't need it in one classroom you need it in the next classroom when you didn't need it with one professor because they gave you their notes I think Hannah said she had a professor that was willing to share their lecture notes fabulous and I think as Greg said not all professors are as empathetic or as interested in providing individual support to you so rethink what your needs are rethink what you can do in that environment um, 